Okay, so um, we having this fifth event on this day, uh, on the 3rd of uh, September, 2021. And uh, we'll start by uh, telling us about the platform, which is posting us the platform is Startup Grind, okay? So Startup Grind is a community of an entrepreneurs uh, all over the world. And uh, we're here to connect entrepreneurs with other entrepreneurs, founders with other founders, to build up a strong community of entrepreneurship uh, across the globe, okay? This is uh, Startup Grand Chapter, Lafia. We are the world largest startup community as a member of the Startup Grand Global Platform. We are changing the world one startup at a time. That's the vision of Startup Grand. Uh, today's Startup Grand is the world's largest community of startups, founders, innovators, and creators. And Startup Grand headquarters is at Silicon Valley. Okay, so uh, I'll start by saying this prover, this African prover. He said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Okay, it's an African prover. So we, we believe in community and uh, we believe in uh, togetherness. And uh, our mission is to give startups everywhere the education and opportunity they need to build grow and scale their companies okay our value we believe in making friends not contacts we believe in giving first not taking we believe in helping others before helping ourselves okay how do we do it we host a lot of events uh more than more than that startup grind is a community we bring like-minded yet diverse individuals together to connect learn teach help build and belong. We do this daily through our local events, conferences, startup membership, partner membership, students and investors program, and online media content collectively reaching over 3.5 million individuals worldwide. So this is a great platform. Uh, we could not do this alone. We have we need a uh, partnership and we partner with M with uh, with Google, this is powered by Google for entrepreneurs. And we have about uh, 600 chapters, uh, one in 125 countries plus, and uh, 170, 1,700 1, plus chapter team members, or 5 million community worldwide. So it's a large platform, and we welcome everyone to this platform. And uh, you can be part of the member of Startup Grand uh, community uh, just by going to the uh, to the page and register uh, so that you get updates on events across the world. Okay, so today we are hosting a very great man and uh, a very great personnel, an entrepreneur, a a psycho uh, a, a microbiologist. And this person is full of knowledge. Okay, so Raphael Peter Gale, aka MC Rolex, who a BSc in microbiology, MC in pharmaceutical microbiology, and PhD in view in oral microbiology from the University of Sheffield, UK. MC Rolex is the CEO of Yes Yes Your Entertainment and also the managing director MD of. Point 86 conglomerate comprises of point 86 housing Lafia, point 86 exclusive bar, and Laura's TV. Although he is currently based in UK, Rafael M. Zilole is an indigenous of natural states, Nigeria, and also a lecturer with the Department of Microbiology, National State University of uh, National State University, KFI. So he will be sharing with us on how to build successful business in Africa using a digital space in this 21st century. So uh, we're going to welcome Mr. Galepi Raphael to the house 
to give us this uh, wonderful presentation and ideology about us. And so please help me welcome uh, Raphael. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Austin Agabi, for hosting me and for a brilliant uh, introduction. So like you said, my name is uh, Rafael Peter Gale, and I'm currently in the United Kingdom for my PhD and stuff like that. So yeah, that's about me and the CEO of Yes, Yes, You Entertainment, as well as Point Eighty Six Conglomerate, like you said. So yeah, thank you for the introduction once more. Awesome. I, I quite admire your ability and your versatile, like... Uh... I know uh, you have uh, a very passion for music and uh, you have your own uh, music in those, uh, music uh, label, I believe, and you've been helping yeah, the music yeah. ecosystem in the Northern Nigeria. And uh, we've been seeing you even uh, representing, taking Nigeria contents uh, in UK. I watched one of your YouTube videos where you were uh, presenting that was in UK. So uh, it's it's so quite uh, astonishing that uh, you have this diverse content of knowledge. So um, thank you very much for being on this platform. And uh, thank you we, so much. We, we, we really appreciate your presence. So uh, we are going to see how you deal with this topic of uh, that we have in our, in our, in our table here. Eh? how to build a business in Africa in this digital space. So uh, you have your time speculated, which I know. So it won't take much of your time talking about our audience. There will be time whereby uh, after his first talk, we're going to have a break session whereby we network. That's one thing that this platform is known for. So you introduce yourself, you have the time to tell us about yourself, what you do, and um, your passion, what you want to contribute to this planet yet. And uh, you can also ask questions when um, you, when the space is given, just make it short. Then uh, we'll go into a personal fire chat with, uh, with our host, uh, with our guest again. Then we we'll call it a day. So it's going to be a short time and uh, very, very intensive and insightful. Uh, and the floor belongs to our guest speaker. Thank you, welcome once again. Oh, right. Uh, once again, Agavi, thank you so much for hosting me and for giving me such an interesting topic to talk about. And the topic, like uh, you rightly mentioned, is how to build a business in Africa in a digital space. Yes. I want to start by saying, although I'm an entrepreneur, I have businesses that I manage, that I am even the CEO, I am not a professional in terms of this, just like you, because you are a professional. So I'm a scientist and I'm a businessman. So you see how it is. However, I will try as much as possible to discuss this uh, topic the best way I can. So to start, I want to start by defining what the term business is. So business is defined as activities of individuals to produce and sell goods and services for the intention of making profit. And digital space, on the other hand, is referred to as the information displayed on the screen of digital devices, such as your smartphones, your laptops, your tablets, your computers, and the rest. So that's business, that's digital spaces. So in a publication in a Harvard Business Review by Acha Leke and Tawanda Sibanda in 2019, they reported that Africa already has 122 million active users of mobile financial services, which is more than half of the global total. Also, they reported that its number of smartphone connection is forecast to rise to 636 million in 2022. 2022 is just a few months to 2022. And you can see the number of active mobile connection users that we're going to have in Africa. 
this is therefore to tell you, the listener, that Africa is actually a virgin ground for any business to thrive or for you to build or to start up your business. So with this advantage or yeah, advantage of uh, connect, connections or connectivity in Africa, e-commerce should therefore be the focus of every business owner, right? The market mm -hmm. is gradually moving from the market, fiscal market that you need to go to a designated place that is called a market and a designated day that is called a market day. So every business should begin to think of using the digital space for his or her own businesses. Mm -hmm. And to this end, I would like to talk on how to sell or to build your product or your businesses in Africa using the digital space. Like I said earlier in my introduction, Africa is a virgin place. That is to say, most of the businesses in Africa are not utilizing this advantage of the technological advancement. However, if you want to give your business like a presence in the digital world, you can start by having like a Facebook page for your business. In Facebook, apart from the friends you have, you can as well pay for advert on your Facebook page. It depends on the number of people you want your advert to reach. If you need 3,000 or 1,000 or 5,000 or 10,000, depending on what your budget is, can contact Facebook and they can advertise your business. So you see, using digital space now will give you a large number of people that could actually see what you're doing. Again, you have Instagram. On Instagram, for example, using Africa that we're talking about with special focus to Nigerian comedians. Now, we used to have stand-up comedians, but you and I know that now, most of the comedians that are making money, especially due to COVID-19, are actually these Instagram comedians, right? Most of them use Instagram. Yeah. And today, they are millionaires, and they are making money, and they are self-employed. Yes. So you could actually use Instagram for your own benefit. While other people go to Instagram to watch pictures of celebrities or beautiful-looking women, you could actually use Instagram to promote your business have a video, you have pictures of what you do, you post it online, you tag people of uh, kind of like minds, people that do similar things with you or your kind of people you're looking to see your business on Instagram, you tag them and people will see it. Again, we have Twitter. I know people who sell their goods on Twitter, shoemakers, cake bakers, tailors, and the rest, you could actually use Twitter as a platform to sell your goods, which is an example of a platform in a digital space. WhatsApp, again, is another good place that you could actually communicate with people, right? You have your WhatsApp status, you could actually send uh, DMs. But to digress a little, in building your businesses, you don't need to be bugging people with sending a lot of uh, broadcast messages to people on, on WhatsApp. Because, no. Your WhatsApp status is like your platform. You don't need to be sending messages to people. When you're posting what you have on your status, people that are interested in what you're doing can actually contact you, right? So you could actually use your WhatsApp status as a platform to sell or to promote your business. We also have LinkedIn, you have Jumia, you have uh, Conga and the rest, even TikTok. You can as well use TikTok as a platform to promote the business you're trying to build. Why am I taking this time to explain some of these platforms? It's not as if they are new uh, things to you. Most of you are aware of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, and the rest. However, so many people, especially in Africa, see some of these platforms as to where they could just come and just make friends and, and just see people and just see gossips and that's all. No, you could actually use it for the startup of your business. You could actually use it for the benefit of yourself, not just to come and see gossips or 
click likes and comment on people's picture. You can actually promote your business through that. Amazon, Jumia, Conga are actually like a delivery platform where you buy things, you don't want to travel, they can help you deliver it. These are some of uh, platforms in digital spaces that are actually making more money, right? We used to have post office in some African countries like Nigeria, but today people use SMS to send their messages and stuff like that. So you think about how to use uh, some of these digital platforms to promote your business. So I want to give some common examples of businesses that are moved online and are doing extremely very, very well. So although over 90% of businesses now operate in digital spaces globally, most African businesses are yet to seize this technological advancement. Nonetheless, there are exceptions to that, and these include recharge card business. In Africa, before now, you need to go to a recharge card vendor by the street to buy a recharge card. You need to scratch the silver panel to see the code and load it. But today, using the digital spaces, you don't need to go to the vendor again. You can actually recharge your phone from your house. Now you see, somebody is using the digital space to promote his business and is making more money, saving costs and stuff like that. Electricity bills, again, you used to go to the uh, electricity company's office to pay for your light bills and stuff. Today, you can be in your house with a mobile app. You can subscribe for your electricity and you have light in your house. So you don't need to go to any office and to go and pay any money, you see. And again, buying goods uh, using the POS or mobile transfers. So when you're building your business in Africa, you can now use POS, for example. You're going to save stress for your customers and for yourself. You're going to, like the security is guaranteed. Before now, when you sell something, you need to, like for example, using an example with uh, a building material businessman that sells in millions. At times you need to carry cash in a Ghana must go or in bags to the banks and then the people in the bank will start counting the money one after the other. That's stress. Now, a business owner can have a POS or you can just do mobile transfer and you transfer your, the money from the seller to yourself straight to your bank account. So what am I saying is, if you want to build your business in Africa, you should think about using digital spaces such as this, right? And some of uh, these businesses are actually doing well. However, I want to talk about advantages of doing businesses via digital spaces. So one thing is for us to tell you that, okay, it's good to do business on digital space and this and that. What are the advantages of doing a business on digital space? One of the advantage of building your business using a digital space is that you have a global access 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What I mean here is if your business is built in the digital space, you don't really have off days or you say today is Saturday or today is Sunday, I'm not working. No, you have 24 hours to sell your business and you have seven days to work. You can be anywhere and do your business. You make your money. Another one I talked about, improved client services through greater flexibility. You also have cost saving. If you build your business using a digital space, for example, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, sorry. Okay. So I said, if you, if you, if you, if you build your business using a digital space, one of the advantages is cost saving. Instead of you paying for shop, instead of you paying for shops, instead of you paying for your electricity, whatever you need to pay to own a shop, because your business is hosted in the digital spaces, 
you save those costs. You don't need to pay those money. And faster delivery, again, if you have a business that is hosted in the digital space, the delivery is very fast. When I talk about Amazon, I talk about Conga and Junior. When your business is hosted in the digital space, delivery is very, very fast. I am in the United Kingdom as we speak. And if I want to buy something in, let's say, Ghana, all I need to do is to contact the seller who is in Ghana and tell him that, okay, this is what I need. I will pay money into the seller's account and the seller will need to send it to me to London. He doesn't need to take a flight from Ghana to London. All he needs to do is to go to, let's say, DHL or Amazon or Conga or Jumia and send it to me. I'll be in London the way I am and I'll collect my parcel. So you see, when you build your business in the digital space, the delivery is super, super fast. And I talked about increased professionalism. See, because you're dealing with people online, you don't know who is who. So it helps you to be apt when it comes to professionalism in doing your business. You have to be very, very smart because you don't know who you're dealing with. So you have to be smart and professional in doing your business. Another point that I'm really, really, yeah, or that I feel is very, very important for me specifically is less paper waste. Less paper waste in the sense that instead of you printing flyers and printing labels and printing everything just to promote your business, how it used to be, if your business is built in the digital space, all you need is to design a soft copy flyer and that you can put in your website or something. Yeah. So you're not going to be gives you cost and again less paper waste. Again, environmental management and stuff like that. Another thing or another advantage of doing business in the digital space is opportunities to manage your business from anywhere in the world. Yeah. So if you build your business in a digital space, you can be in let's say Kenya and you manage your business in Cameroon. Yeah. You can be in Niger and manage your business in Nigeria. You see, so you don't need to be where your business is. Yeah. All you have or all you need is your mobile phone or your laptop and the internet connectivity and you're good to go. In fact, before now, if you go to the office of a rich man, you need to go to a fiscal building with a big table, with a flat screen, with cushions and stuff. But today, the office of a billionaire is not like that. The office of a billionaire is seeing his kit back, right? Yeah. And what is the office? The office is the laptop. laptop yeah. You see, just the laptop and mm. your modem, if in case you're not in, like you're in Africa where you need to pay for your internet, internet server, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, have, you have your laptop and your modem or your internet connection. Yeah, when you open it. your laptop, you can now go into your business, transact your business, close your laptop. That is your office. You can, your office can be in your room. You can mm. be in the church. You can be on the bike. You can be anywhere and you still do your business. So opportunity to manage your business in any part of the world. But then I want to specifically talk about what digital spaces can do to the economy of Africa. Now, digital economy. Recently in Nigeria, we have a minister of digital economy. I think his name is Pantami, Pantami somebody. Pantami, yeah. Pantami, somebody. Isa Pantami, yeah. Isa Pantami, yeah. So you see, Nigeria and other African countries like Kenya and the rest, they are doing actually good in digital economy. Digital economy contributes a lot. If you remember when we had issues, or you guys had issues, or people from Nigeria had issues with their Twitter, when they said there, there was a Twitter ban, you know how much was lost. In fact, the GDP of Nigeria to some extent dropped because of the economy that was lost just from Twitter. Imagine if you ban WhatsApp, you ban Facebook, you ban Instagram and the rest. You can imagine what that is going to do to the GDP of the country. Yeah. So that is digital economy. 
quite a lot of money is coming out of that place. People who are selling data, for example, MTN or Glue or Atel are making quite a lot of money because for you to access any video on Instagram, you need to have data. Yeah. Those who are uploading those videos can be making money from the content they create. So you see how the business is moving. It's helping the digital economy, it's helping the economy or the, the GDP of the country. You might not know it, but it is. Yeah, right? very well. And again, another thing we talk about digital spaces is cryptocurrencies. Before now, and I'm aware that some African countries ban uh, cryptocurrencies in their countries due to yeah. policies of their central banks and stuff. I wouldn't blame them actually, maybe because of fraud and stuff. But yeah. recently, was it yesterday or day before yesterday, I read about uh, the digital digital Nera, something like yeah. that. I read something yeah, about we, we actually, yeah. The the governments are making policy uh, to to bring about Inera. They are introduced in Inera by first of October, and okay. that is one of the meeting. Uh, our startup chapter we represent uh, uh, part of the northern Nigeria uh, as yeah. in yeah, Kefi last year, and okay. um, there are some people from the NCC were there. So young individuals make prom, uh, policy. I spoke on that event about blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And, and I believe uh, the policy orchestrated the government to make sure that uh, they tag the uh, economy to digital economy. And uh, introducing crypto to the space world of, uh, of Nigeria economy is a very highly welcome idea by the current government. And uh, we, we, we believe they are listening and uh, a lot is going on um, to make sure that um, uh, digital economy is well established. I, I can see how much in revenue where tech, uh, tech industry have contributed to the GDP of Nigeria currently. So a lot is going exactly. on. Yeah. So exactly. So we move on. as we're talking about uh, cryptocurrency, yeah. e Naira's and the rest, you can you see, the people of these days, they don't like stress, right? Yeah. They don't like stress. You tell someone to carry bundles of money in his pocket or in her wallet or in her handbag. She doesn't like it. People yeah. prefer to have e-wallet, right? Exactly. Electronic wallet. They don't, they don't like stress. <clears throat> so you see, <clears throat> that's digital economy, cryptocurrency. If every country will have their own e currency yes there will be no need for you to go to any bureau de change yeah, that exactly. telling you yes, bring this bring that you can be in your room and exchange your currency yes. and, and life goes on and just life goes on no stress nothing exactly you see so that is the space cryptocurrencies is doing SME, small medium and yeah small medium enterprises yeah. are other uh, businesses that really contribute Enormously to the economy of any or every country, exactly. most especially in Africa. If African leaders can support SMEs in their countries, I think Nigeria is doing well using uh, the Vice President Osibanjo in yeah. SMEs and stuff. I'm here in the UK actually, but I follow some of this news in Africa and I can see it's doing well. Entrepreneurship again in the digital space or digital economy could actually reduce unemployment by graduate. You yes. see, most people that do businesses today are actually graduates. Some of them are graduates. Some of the comedians you see on Instagram or yeah. on Facebook. On, so most of them are graduates. Well, because like I said in one of my posts on my Facebook page, the government, unfortunately, they cannot employ everybody. Yeah, exactly. Even here in the UK, or in America or in China, government cannot employ everybody. It's not as if they don't want to, but they can't. You see, they can't. So now digital economy helps in reducing unemployment mm -hmm. yes. of the graduate and other people in the society, especially using Africa as a reference point where we have government that looks as if they don't even want to do the government Wow. 
a TV and go to somebody's office. Okay. Yes, that's true. Yes. Okay. How uh, we barely... You see, in Africa... Okay. I don't know, maybe it's your network service as it's uh, gotten, but... Um, yes. Okay. Can you hear me? So, in Africa, like I said... Yes. I can hear you. In Africa, is a virgin market or is a virgin place for investors to come in and to build their businesses. Africa, we have a vast majority of land. We have vast land. You have solar system. You, you don't even have uh, uh, natural disasters. If yeah. you're following the news, you know what is happening in America with natural disasters, flood, hurricane, and stuff. In Africa, you don't even have all these things. So that is to say, the cost of building a business in the Western world is going to be more and more higher than the cost of building a business in Africa. Yes, exactly. And again, if you need a manpower labor, for example, yeah. in Africa, you have quite a lot of people that you pay, you just pay them meager salaries and they will deliver for you. Exactly. And in fact, that is one of the things that China is using, actually. China is using its own manpower to yes. boost their economy. Yeah. And we all know what the economy of China is. If not the first, yeah. it's the second largest economy in the it's world. The and we one. always say second because we always want to respect the America. America yeah. But then almost everything that is used in America has been produced in China. Mm. So you see, they're actually using what? Their manpower. And we have green energy generation. Like I said earlier, in Africa, mm. yeah. you have the solar system. Here in the UK, most of the cars are now hybrid. Hybrid means most yeah. of the cars we use in the UK are rechargeable cars. You don't buy foils any longer, yeah. right? You don't buy foils. All you need to do is just plug your car and your car charges. Maybe you're sleeping at night. Your car is charging. In the morning, you wake up. Your car is fully charged. Yeah. So you see, we're using electric here in the UK. In, in Africa, where you have sunlight, what are you using it for? Oh, yeah. You could actually use solar system to power your cars, to power your generators, to even generate electricity mm. and stuff like that. And then in Africa, again, we're talking about smart cities. Yeah. Example of someone that is actually doing well for building his business using digital spaces, Econ. We all know Econ, right? Econ yes. is a superstar. He is a billionaire in dollars, not even in Naira or in shillings or wherever. He's now back to Africa because he saw the market in Africa and he's building smart cities. I think mm -hmm. Nigeria tried to something, they call it Millennium City in Abuja along airport road. Like if you're going to the airport, yeah. is where they were actually trying to build a Millennium City, which is actually a smart city. But I don't know what happened to it. And I want to believe that other African countries can yeah. key into this smart city uh, idea and try to see how they can leverage on it. Yeah. Going back again to Africa, places like Lekki in Lagos, they're actually smart places. As if it's a different part of the world. No, smart means Everything is smart. You have smart card, you have smart watches, you have, you have smart TVs. Like my TV here, I, my TV is smart TV. Wow. All the channels I need to watch are like apps. All I need to do is to touch the screen of my TV and I, and I watch. My TV is smart, my watch is smart, my, my phone is smart, everything is, my computer is smart. Mm. So that's what we're talking about, smart city. So to build this kind of a business, and why am I saying this thing is, if you're listening to this, and you're focusing on Africa to make money, you actually make money because yes. there are no much people doing stuff yes. like this. For example, if you want to go into selling smart watches, smart headphones, smartphones, smart computers, yeah. smart TVs, and the rest, you make money while you're importing those things. Another person will focus on generating a strong Wi-Fi or a broadband yeah. that someone will actually use to make money out of it. And again, the problem some of these African countries are having is actually unfavorable policies in African countries. 
Yeah. Like you have countries who are banning Twitter, countries who are banning Facebook, who are bringing some bottleneck that will actually restrict uh, digital economy or digital spaces is actually not good. But another thing that I want to talk about digital yeah. spaces or doing businesses or building your businesses in digital space is yes. uh, fraud, fraudulent activities. You see, it's not everything digital or internet that is a scam. Yeah. And it's not every African that is a scammer, right? Yeah. Because most people in Africa, when they hear about internet or they hear about digital spaces, they begin to think, ah, these people are scammers. Yeah. Are this, these people are that. Yes, it's good to be security conscious of whosoever you're dealing with because I'm here in the UK. Yes. You're there. I think you're in Nigeria, I guess. Yes, I'm probably. Another person that is listening, maybe it's from Ghana or different other. I don't know you. You don't know me. We just meet over the internet. So yeah. it's a good, good reason for you to be security conscious. However, it's not everything that is in the internet that is a scam. And it's not every African that is a scammer. Yeah. But then there's what we call cyber security. Yeah. So you see, the digital community has put in place what we call cyber security, yeah. where you could actually protect your website, you protect your, even your Facebook page or yeah. Instagram account, like using the two-factor system security uh, stuff on your Facebook. I often see people complain about my Facebook is hacked, my Facebook is hacked. These things are on your Facebook. Just yeah. go to your settings, go to two-way, uh, two multi-something factor system for security, yeah. Yeah. two-factor system, and you protect your security in uh, your Facebook, yeah, even your yeah. WhatsApp, your Instagram. You protect it. You don't allow it for scammers to just scam you anyhow. Yeah. So doing, building your business in cyber in digital spaces is yes. quite good. And the honors of digital spaces taught it wise to put cyber security. Exactly. See? So these are some of the advantages of uh, doing your businesses yes. or building your businesses in cyber or in digital spaces okay. and what some of these businesses can do to the economy of the country. But before I end yes, my please. presentation, Okay. I want to talk about some attributes of a good businessman. Business okay. Okay. Right. So if, for example, yes. you're building a business, there are attributes. What I mean by attribute, like there are qualities yes. that a businessman should have if you want to be successful in your business or while building your business. So oh, in oh. today's highly competitive business environment, if are demanding customers and economic fluctuations, yes. to be successful in business, one needs to possess the following qualities. One, patience. Mm. If you're building your business, especially in Africa, you have to be patient. Patient because it's not all the people that actually understand doing business in a digital space. Mm. Just imagine you're selling something and you're trying to go smart and someone comes to your shop and you said, I don't accept cash. I have a POS. If you can use POS and just put your card, yeah. that other person will be saying, no, I don't trust you. You all these POS people, they are frosters. If I put my card, they will copy my, uh, my number, stuff like that. Yeah. So you see, you have to be patient when building yeah. a digital business in Africa. Again, in addition, if you're building a business to be successful, you have to be patient. Yeah. Patient in the sense that you're just starting and you're trying to compare yourself with Angote or Otedola or some of these top business people in the world. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not done that way. You have to be patient while building your business, especially in... Okay. So uh, you just round up the thoughts on the characteristics so that uh, we can as well just... Um, and certainly someday you're going to make it. Yes. So uh, that's very nice. If we're looking at that. Let's, we don't have much time and uh, we don't know. I just want you to round up your thoughts on just, just one more minute so that you round up your thoughts on, on the topic. I know you've discussed. Are you there? 
yes, we've discussed intensively on uh, uh, what the digital space is and having a business digital space. And uh, you talked about um, growth of the internet users in Africa. And you've discussed a lot about uh, uh, the policy making and why business are striving and why they're not striving in Africa. That was also, you talked about the green, uh, the green energy and um, uh, the trend of what a globalization is, is currently. So it is great. And uh, it just for our people to be able to see this as an opportunity in Africa, that Africa is a, is a virgin land and uh, yeah. there's a lot of businesses are moving are moving from the, you know, the Western and the Eastern world to Africa. You know, Techno was a big brand in Africa and it's yeah. still a big brand. And uh, how did it start? It started by seeing China from before we know it, Techno take over. You know, exactly. before we we're looking at that, uh, there was a competition between Android phone and uh, Windows and also iPhone, but Android is taking the lead. You see, so that's there's taking, a trend going on. Lot. We know an African can create something like that. We discussed, we also just as you said about cryptocurrencies and all of this. So our policies are being shaped, and I believe uh, we, we are getting it right. But we need to intensify this awareness to our people. You know, there's once there's one there's one uh, comment Bill Gates made that um, I always think about. He said, if you have a business and um, if your business is not on the cyberspace, that means if your business is not on the internet, you don't have a presence of your business, whatever you are selling, we're not just talking mm. about the green, we are talking about SME, yeah, the small micro business owners here. Yeah. So if you, if whatever you are selling in Africa at all, we have that spirit of entrepreneurship as an African. So, mm. and also we need to create an environment where other investors and angel investors and capital funds can be able to invest in idea in Africa. So we can only do that by ourselves. We should not be waiting for the government. You have the entrepreneurship, you have the internet, you are living in a global village. You take advantage of that. If you are a tailor, present your tailor work on the online platform. If you are an engineer, present it. Whatever you do, let people know because you don't know where your customer is coming from. So that's, that's, what we, 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 that's one of the focus of this, this meeting. And we believe that uh, it will motivate and inspire other people on how to start doing business. Well, if you are working, don't depend on your, your five to six job. Create a time to be an entrepreneur, to sell something, be a manager. You are, you are not going to, that's, you are not going to uh, give your job, whatever, you are not going to give your job to your children, but you can handle over a company, an idea to your generation. So that's why we talk about uh, life is all about uh, succession. And you've done very wonderfully well. Uh, uh, Mr. Rafa Peter Gale, I, I would highly recommend that. Okay, so what I want us to go into, if we have anybody that have questions on, on this, if you have questions on what you've heard so far, very nice uh, uh, presentation, you ask your questions, then we'll just break into, we we'll just introduce yourself, then we, we do uh, uh, 20 to 10 minutes fire chat uh, with with our guest. So do we have anyone with a question? Uh, Abdullah Suleiman, you've been following this session right from the start. Uh, do you have any questions, sir? You can unmute yourself. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yeah, uh, basically uh, this is a uh, very, enlightened session with uh, Dr. Gali. Yes. And uh, to be honest, this is this effort is very, very commendable. Okay. Uh, our people are lacking far, far, far behind. Yes. Uh, in terms of uh, using the, the opportunities abound in the digital space. Yes. And uh, there is uh, one saying, uh, Azik, I think by Bill Gates, that yes. if your business is not online, you are you, are, you don't have business. Exactly, you will be so, out of business yes. in 10 years. That's what I was. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you are not in business. So what am I saying? Everything now shifting. They, they target uh, as the new normal. Yes. The new, yes, the new normal. So uh, mine is uh, just uh, an addition to all that has happened. Uh, I would yes. like to 
uh, commend uh, Dr. Gali and encourage him to be doing more. Okay. Uh, in our own uh, little, uh, in our own little way, we are yeah. we are trying to enlighten our people exactly. to, to 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 key in, and wherever we see something like this, uh, especially a uh, seminar, finish webinar or something, uh, yeah. we also give our time to attend to it so that we also pass the knowledge across. Yeah. Uh, this is very com this is very commendable, and uh, I'm supporting it. 100% uh, and I would like it to continue. Let it not be the first and let this not be the last. Awesome. Let it be, yes, let it be, let it be, even if it is end of the month or by maybe quarterly or something like that. Yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. I can see you are the CEO of uh, Yagnongi, yeah, oh, uh, okay, sorry if I'm more than the name. Please uh, uh, tell us about yourself and what's- Enlighten our people to key into, yes, to key into this. I said you, I can see that you 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 own a hub, right? Can you tell us about this and where you are from? Yeah, uh, like you can, uh, as you can see, my name is uh, Abdullah Suleiman. Okay. I'm a graduate of uh, public administration from Nasra State University, Kevi. Awesome. Okay. And yeah, I own a startup, Yanengizo Hub, and Yanengizo is a house award, meaning internet, and you all know what hope is all about. That mm -hmm. is something that connects, something that connects. Yes. Yes. So we are trying to connect people. We are trying to connect people to the internet and let them know the, the opportunities abound in everything internet. Yeah. So uh, there is this uh, services we are offering to our people. Awesome. Uh, basically, yes, uh, data sets, like you mentioned earlier. How do you how do before you assess the internet, you must have you must have data. So we key in. We have partnership with uh, MTN and other startup. We are providing affordable data to people. Like yeah. one gig, you can get one gig at three fifty, two gig at six fifty, and so on. Very affordable and cheap. And also our people, most of them, you see, when they have cable TV, to subscribe is always a problem. So we are trying to bridge in the gap, most yeah. especially in the in the rural area. Awesome. So we, we subscribe at uh, we subscribe to DSTV, Star Times, and all of that. And the the, the introduction of the, this new prepared meter by by electricity distribution companies. Yes. So yes, we are still leveraging on that to see how we can uh, sell tokens to people at no uh stress at all so that you just come into our store with your uh card number and you get your meter subscribed and all that stuff like that oh awesome that's great wow you are doing quite a lot you say you are located in kefi or is in where are you located no. where okay so that's very, very, that's very good. That's a nice Except thought. And um, we do subscription all states and we are doing good. Our page uh, in, uh, in Facebook, Facebook, you will see. If you search Yanan Gizo Hope, you will see what we are doing in Facebook. Okay. That's very good. Okay, so let's go back to our guests. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to uh, be more, we we'll have a fireside chat with, with, uh, with, with Dr. Rafa or Peter Gale, and uh, we from there will round up. Okay, so um, we, we are so grateful by your insight and that's our presentation. So let's just go more of our fireside chats whereby um, we'll be asking you um, more personal questions and uh, you know, just test your ideology about uh, what our environment uh, is experiencing currently. So, and um, I know that some people have received some questions from some of your fans that are not here, you know. So, some of their questions, I, I, I hope it's to be uh, uh, some uh, interactive session with, with you here. So, so what is saying, how do we see uh, the entertainment industry, okay, 
uh, especially in the northern Nigeria, in the next uh, five or three years to come? How do you see? Do you see people, you know, the likes of uh, entertainers making millions, and there are some people who have talents, uh, especially in the northern part of Nigeria, and they are not really uh, getting those those um, attentions and those uh, inflow of cash. What do you think is the problem, and how can they uh, facilitate? Uh, promotion and scaling for their business, for their talents and career. Mm. Okay, uh, Austin, thank you so much for the question. And you decided to ask me entertainment kind of related question because yeah. I'm a Mr. Rolex, you know, I'm into entertainment and music. However, before I answer your question, I would like to take this time to, to say well done to Abdullahi. Suleiman, CEO of Yanangizo Hub. To be honest with you, when you have, I don't want to say young people like him because I'm a young person as well, Yeah. right? But if Abdullahi will allow me to see young people like him, when you have young people like Abdullahi who are ready to take their future into their hands, then the world become a stage for them. Yeah. If you see what I mean. You can see that other people joined this uh, conversation, but they left because yes, yeah. they don't feel like there's need for it. But he has been here, and you know how much he must have spent in terms mm -hmm. of data to yeah. listen to what we are saying. That is to say, he's ready to invest in his future. Yeah. And tomorrow, Abdullah Suleiman will become a big person like uh, Adenuga. Is it Adenuga that owns Glow, right? Yes, my Adenuga. These big companies in South Africa that owns MTN or a tea salad, do we still have a tea salad, Airtel, and the rest? Yeah. And then someone will now be saying, Abdullah, Abdullah Suleiman did money ritual. That's why he's rich. No, he decided to invest in yeah. his future. Yeah. And what is he doing? He found out the what the need yeah. of the customers and yeah. he's deciding to bridge that gap. Exactly. You see. Abdullahi, what he's doing is breaching the gap between those people that have phone but they do not have internet. Yes. And he's in the middle. He's bringing the internet. He's yeah. getting the internet from the bigger companies like MTN as a middleman and he's bringing it to these people. So you see, he's at least uh, 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 providing the services to yeah. people. Quickly, quickly, let's go back. Now, to going back to the question you asked me about entertainment in the northern Nigeria, yeah. to be honest with you, there are there are there are people who are actually doing well in entertainment. Like I know of Morel, I know of uh, I know of Kings, I know of, what's his name? Uh, Zona, Zona. There's this guy. There's this guy. I will remember his name actually. People like MI and the rest, they're actually from the north, but they moved to Lagos. Why? It's because of environment. Okay. You see, one thing to so environment, do you how do you how do you see um you know people around not creating that same environment that the talent is moving into? Because as much as people who have to run to other states Lagos. to be able to Lagos yeah. to be able to see the lights or the shine it's 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 not balancing the ecosystem you know because it's not because, it's not balancing because yes. the government you see it's not everything that individual that wants to do something that can do it there are policies when i talked about policies there are policies that government can actually put in place to support some of these things okay lagos is lagos is the hope of entertainment not because the people of lagos decided to make it the hub or because there's an enabling environment right yeah for example you have ministry of youth and sport but the only thing they do in ministry of youth and sport is is, is football okay they forget about other aspects of youth and just focus on football that is not what the ministry is all about the ministry is for youth and sport that is to say there are other things okay, that so with do. your experience what 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 advice can you give a, a someone that aspires to invest in an entertainment industry in these sectors in africa in general what advice can you give because I can see that you start with an entertainment and uh, uh, entertainment has one or two uh, way to your, to you, I believe. I just, I don't know whether I'm sure, uh, you know, you know, exposing you out and you, you leverage on that or so many things, you know, 
uh, you they did not call you a celebrity lecturer from there you know your film so do you do you think your experience you know in entertainment you try to rub that in your other aspects of works or yeah exactly you know, to be honest with you to be honest with you today i'll be able to stand on stage or like you said you watch some of my videos i'm in the uk i can yeah. go to an a big event and perform yeah. on stage to white people not because i just woke up and i started it but because i had this background of music okay. that i'll be able to stand before people and sing my song or say yeah. whatsoever i want well, to say awesome, so entertainment awesome. has really exposed me and gave me this public kind of speaking ability okay. and again when you ask about if what do I have to say to someone that wants to invest in uh, entertainment in yes. the northern part of the country? Yes. I would tell you that if you have the money and the resources, you will make quite a lot of money. So when we say Africa is a virgin place to start a business, use Nigeria. Do you have investment? Do you do you do you have investment in any assets in Af in, uh, in Africa? Do you, uh, you yes? Oh yeah, in in Africa, for example, I have yes, yes, your entertainment. Yes, and you, yes, yes. Are you signing people out? Are you signing people in your music industry? Is your music industry right? Um, have you signed anybody there? Yes, yes. yes. I have? had I had art, I had two three artists, and one of the yeah. artists, his name is Yon Swak. He's now a producer. He owns a studio now. He's making his own money now. He's making his money. You see what I mean? Yeah, he was formerly okay. under me, but now he owns his own studio and he's doing his own thing. Okay. And he's making money. Now, yeah, thank you very much. Let's go into this. Um, based on your definition of what business is, do you think someone needs to be qualified to start a business? Do you need? Do you think somebody needs to have qualifications? Yeah, so people have to like, I need to be a graduate, I need to have this thing and all, I need to be you know, smart street and all of that. I, I, I mean, uh, street smarts and all of that. So some people are afraid of taking that risk. Do you think um, being an entrepreneur is you must be qualified or, or you can build it from? I wouldn't want to say qualified. Okay. I would say for you to go into business, you need some skills. Okay. I would say skills, yes. Or qualification, I said no. If I'm talking about qualification, then Abdullah Suleiman is more qualified than me because he studied business administration. I studied okay. microbiology. Okay. But in today's world, all you need is skills, right? And if you're into business, you are not supposed to just go into the business and sit. So you're supposed to look your for additional plan? information. Yeah, thank you. What are your future plans for in general, like for 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 Africa? What do you think? You... So my 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 future plan, like you see in my bio, I'm also the uh, managing director of Point Eighty Six Conglomerate. Yes. Point Eighty Six Conglomerate. We have Point Eighty Six Housing and we have Point Eighty Six Exclusive Bar. So Point Eighty Six Housing basically we build student accommodations around universities okay. across Africa. So that is my future plan. But for now, I'm starting with Nigeria, right? Mm -hmm. So I have student buildings in Federal University, Lafayette, for example. Okay. I have chains of flats for students. Wow. And my intention is to have flats in Makodi, flats in Kefi, flats in, in Jos, in Kano, anywhere that there is a university. Okay. I intend to build student hostels where we can actually provide a decent and affordable accommodation. Then awesome. we can now employ people like Abdullah Suleiman to now provide internet yes. for the people in our houses. So that is the future plan. And yeah, that is the angle I'm looking at. Okay. So what are you trending on currently? What are you trending on currently that's kind of trading on for you? How do you mean? Like um, something that you are working on currently. You, are you working on a project or something that you believe it will help a other project people? that has to do with entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship or that has to do with my career that has to do with entrepreneurship or your career anything you know. okay entrepreneurship like i said i'm into uh hospitality so i'm currently now i'm building another uh student accommodation in kefi Wow. for students so we are done with the one in lafia point 86 housing we have our facebook page we have you could actually check into our facebook uh, 
account, just like you send your check-in in Kefi or you check in in Abuja, you can actually check in our uh, property. So we're building another one in Kefi. That's how one invests in your organization. Exactly. That is what business is all about, collaboration. Okay, so how, right? how can someone invest in your organization and what are the returns of business? Okay, if you want to invest in uh, 0.86 conglomerate, for example, we have a bar where you now say, okay, you will be providing shawamas or you'll be providing suya or you'll be providing pepe soup. Or you'll be... You see, that is collaboration. I own the place. You do your business. You pay me part of uh, like a tax or kind of. Then you make money, I make money, and we pay for the rent, and that's all. And if you want well, to invest in our own buildings, if we are building, let's say, 10 story buildings, you may decide to pay for floor two or floor three. You pay for that. At the end of the day, you're going to be collecting the rent. I'm taking my part, you're taking your part. That is it. That awesome, is awesome. Problem. So what, what, do you, what do you see? What's the ideology of our politics in Nigeria? What's the ideology? Do you think, uh, you know, uh, the political structure needs to be changed or we are, we are moving the right path? Uh, I wouldn't say the political structure should be changed. What I would say is the political gladiators should think more of the people. They should think more of what they can do for the people, not for themselves. Okay. You see, the difference between the politicians in Africa and the politicians here in the Western world is just one thing. The politicians here in the Western world are thinking about the people, while the politicians in most of the politicians in Africa are thinking about yeah. themselves and yeah, children, yeah. Okay. and that's awesome. why we're having issues. Awesome. See, uh, the young, the youth are glamouring for what we call e-governments. Do you understand anything about e-governments and e-government in general? Do you have ideology? About I, I don't know. What Can you shed more light on what e-government I think I understand what you're trying to say, but I just want to understand if that's what I'm thinking. Okay, using the digital world, the digital space to impact government. Okay, policy exactly. government. Just like exactly. now, the, 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 there's a policy that is going on uh, due to the, uh, to the electoral uh, uh, reform in Nigeria, where you know we are saying they should pass a policy whereby results can be transmit, uh, transmitted, your transmission of results, you know, mm -hmm. using the technology. And also we can see that blockchain contracts uh, we can we can use blockchain technology for voting. So uh, the I like uh, the government are saying yes. They've been accepting other parts of the uh, endeavor, but when it comes to uh, voting or election, I, I think it's still pending and they are still struggling. I think it was in the law is uh, still in uh, as of rep or something. Do you have an idea about that? Yes, I have idea about e governance. Okay. And talking about e-transmission of electoral results. Yeah. I'm in the UK, and that is how things have been done here. I don't need to go to the polling unit to go and vote anybody. I can stay in my house and vote because I have my own personal identification number that yeah. I can vote only once. And they have a server that can uh, compute the result and announce who the winner is. But like I told you, the difference between Western leaders and African leaders is just one thing. They okay. think about themselves only. If, if not, how leader, can you see? If, if a leader you make a statement, so if a leader make a statement and say, "Take it to the bank," you understand. Yeah. I mean, there is a metaphor for saying that they are going to stand by their word. Yeah. Do you think Nigeria government are standing by their word, or they will just make policy and it will not? They will not implement it. I wouldn't say totally no, but I don't think if they are actually saying what. They are saying and standing by it. They just say it and they don't stand by it, to be honest. Okay. Okay, so one word, one word for uh for entrepreneurship and the future of Africa. So the one word that we say is policies. When you have good policies, it will encourage investors to come to your country. So if African leaders sit down and have good policies, foreign investors can come into their lands and develop the land. So the foreign investor, investors that come into your country, while they are making money, your people are making money as well. Yeah. You see what I mean? So it has to be good policy. 
that will encourage foreign investors to come to Africa. Okay, thank you very much. You've really done a lot of justice to those questions and uh, you've really tapped into your depth of knowledge. You are, you are, man, I don't even know what to say right now, but you, you, you really showed the, <laughs> the topic here. So thank you very, very much. So we will end the class now. Did you say class? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say shit. Sure. Yeah. I'm using the word class, I do. Uh, you are a lecturer, so <laughs> it's like a lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> So you have, you have somebody, Stefan. Yeah, that joined. I don't know, know maybe if there's a question that you want to ask or you want to update so that we, we carry him along. So, Stefan, you can unmute yourself and uh, bring in to draw your contribution. Okay, well, good evening. Good evening, Stefan. Yeah, sorry, I, I was on transit, so I could not join on time. No worries. And I could not. I could not hear most of what I was planning to hear from the lecturer himself. Uh, but I'm hoping like if there's a, uh, something that I can do like a slide, maybe so that I can read and go through. Then maybe if I have questions, then I will forward it to you. Okay, you know. that is good. Uh, we're going to upload, it's recorded, it's recorded on the record events. So we're going to upload it on webs on uh, YouTube. And also, uh, He's going to write about it on his blog, so you can also follow. Through. So, if you have any question, actually, you can send your question to Austin at startupgrind dot uh, startup Okay, that's the okay. official email for this uh, for this event, and uh, I am the startup grind director uh, for that. Year. So, when you get your email to us, we we'll, we'll find a way of getting it to. Uh, Galea needs to be answered. Okay, so uh, okay. you can rewatch this. Okay, and it's live event. You can rewatch. We're going to upload it on YouTube and uh, follow other channels so that you get more details on how you can. Uh, because we don't have time to start uh, going back to what's happened. Okay, so um, aside that, uh, we want you to introduce yourself, Mr. Yes, on mute. So tell us about yourself. Then we end it. Okay. Um Stefan is the one Panila. Okay. Um I still in just south. Wow. Kevon precisely. Okay. Mm, Kevon, I did my IT in Kevon. No, he's the lecturer is my neighbor when he did his IT in Kevon. Okay. Wow. That's I awesome. did my IT in Kevon. I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of blessed with his with his life. Oh, with what he's you. doing is a kind of experience to us when the, the youths that we are coming up at least okay. i i would like to follow his own footsteps he might not understand me but i i do follow him back to back on youtube <laughs> okay. just like his songs i'm already there but <laughs> yes, yeah, what, what i have to say is like you are really a source of encouragement to us we are looking Thank forward you. to the day that we are going to meet and we'll talk one on one. I'm Nelford's brother. Maybe if you if you know Nelford. Okay. I know Nelford now. Oh, okay. I know Nelford now. I have to pass through your house to get to where I was living. Didn't so mama yes. you. Okay, yes, so yes. that's that's thank okay. You. Thank you very much. I know you guys know each other, so thank you very much. And uh uh just as we said, let's just get a cap of what a startup grant is all about. Okay, and uh we said uh Startup grind, grind is the uh, the largest community of startups in the world. Okay, and we have our headquarters in uh, Silicon Valley, and uh, we have uh, chapters across the world. About six hundred chapters, one hundred twenty five countries, and uh, one thousand seven hundred chapter members and communities member worldwide. So if you I would like to be part of our community and get more details and updates on the next events. Uh, you can go to www.startupgrind.com forward slash Lafia so that you can register and be part of our community to get updates on our uh, event. We host uh, founders and owners of businesses and aspire uh, business owners 
to connect with themselves so that uh, we build a very strong ecosystem of entrepreneurship across God, uh, especially in uh, our state, natural state, Lafia. Thank you very much, you guys, and uh, you are all welcome. We're going to end it here, and um, we appreciate you. Thumbs up to Doctor himself. We look forward to host you again. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye to everyone. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you.